Uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce and meet for the first time Terry Zaki. Great to talk to you, mate. Uh, and Thank hello, you, Shane. From, hello from down under. Have you been to Australia? I have never been to Australia before. I've been to the UK, but not Australia. You know, maybe <laughs> maybe one of these days. Maybe you know. <laughs> well, we are talk we are talking uh, for the UK site, the People's Movie. So I really am stoked great. that you're with us today. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. Thank you, Shane. Now, I first saw, talking about your documentary, of course, about your dad's movie, I Spit on Your Grave. Um, but right. firstly, I'll let you know a little bit about my history with the movie. As a kid in Australia, we didn't have video nasties. So all those movies were actually uh, on the shelf to hire. You could watch them. And I Spit on Your Grave, I think in the video shop I worked at, had about three copies and right. constantly rented out. And then one went missing. I remember one went missing. So it was a very popular movie. <laughs> yes, I've heard that a lot of times that on the rental shelves, they don't get returned because people <laughs> like kept them. <laughs> so. yeah, and, and at one point we had to photocopy the slick, the, the cover, because people wanted the cover as well. Right, yeah. right, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's got an iconic poster, a definite yeah. iconic poster, yeah. It was something I didn't know, which I learned in your documentary. And I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I should have known this, that Demi Moore is in the poster. She was yes. the model for the football, for the, the second poster anyway. Correct. Exactly. Exactly. The, it, the movie came out, it was filmed in 76. It came out in 78 as Day of the Woman yeah. with, Camille, with Camille Keaton's poster right right over there, just oh, like that. That's, that's hectic. That's great. And then in 1980, mastermind Jerry Gross, who distributed a lot of exploitation films, changed the title to I Spit on Your Grave right, right behind <laughs> me. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> oh, Mike's gone silent. One. Go okay, for it. <laughs> so, so my documentary came out in 2019 in April. And a few months later, Demi Moore released her book. I think it's called My Memoir, or it's like a you know biography about her life. And then she finally admitted in the book that she was in the poster. You know, so it was nice to have her camp finally come out with it as well not you know so because a lot of people still question you know the proof that i found in my documentary people still questioned if it's really her right you know, so I, I was so glad that she came out with her own book and admitted it finally after all these years you know so thank you to me thank you <laughs> it was a great coincidence her book came out and it's closure by her admitting it and yes it's just, yes it's an iconic poster so that just adds another twist to the story Mm-hmm. It really <laughs> does. Yeah. It made it made me laugh, Terry, to hear that you got ten dollars to be in the movie. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and yet that's what that's why I was in it. You know, I had all the I was visiting. Oh no. Um back again. So what, what we talk, oh yeah, about me being in the movie. So we lived in Jamaica Hills. We drove two and a half hours to Connecticut. My mother drove me and my sister. And that was the day that they filmed my scene. I'm the mm -hmm. little boy in the 1978 movie with my sister. When all the crew people came, you're going to be in a movie. I was shy. I was crying. I was scared. I kept saying no, 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 no. And then their solution was that my, you know, your father offered ten dollars. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know? So that was the story. For ten oh, I had a question too. Very unexpected. I, I like the fact that you were actually crying and your, the, the actor who was playing your mum gave you a big hug and that was in the yeah. movie. Was that, so that was a real cry and obviously she might have been really hugging you or was that part <laughs> of the script? <laughs> no, that was part of the script actually. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I was very nervous. I was pulling up my pants. I was like, just like so nervous. 
And, you know, but working with Alexis Magnoti, who played my mother in the movie, yeah. I kind of knew her from being the makeup, I mean, the continuity gal on the film. So I kind of knew her, which made it a little more comfortable for me. But I was a nervous little shy kid. I oh. wanted nothing to do with being in this movie. But I'm <laughs> glad I was. I'm glad they paid me $10 to, you know, because yeah. I don't know what else would have talked me into it, honestly. <laughs> do, you, do you remember what you bought with the $10 or did you save it? Right, you probably a bunch of bazooka bubble gums you know yeah. at the time <laughs> cool. uh did, did anyone keep anything from the movie was there any mementos uh like the red canoe is that still around oh yeah you know what i believe the canoe still exists on the property of the house i see oh you know, it's it's owned by the uh daughter and the children of the cinematographer and yeah. my, my sister was just there a couple of weeks ago actually nice. in, in the house and tam my sister was like terry the boat is here and the canoe and i was like oh my gosh wow <laughs> and i think they have the axe as well okay um you know so yeah some of the things are still around but i have nothing personally from that movie okay. and nothing yeah nothing just memories just memories exactly <laughs> <laughs> what uh what prompted you to make the film did you want to tell your dad's story uh because it's so notorious uh or was it because deja vu was getting made did you want to like relive the original you mean my documentary yeah why did you um, yeah um... make it I made the documentary way before I ever knew I spit in your grave deja vu would even exist. It was before right. I made it before I spit in the grave part two and three came out. I started it in, in the early 2013 mm. and it was a five year stretch that it took me to make that. So as I was toward the end of almost finishing my documentary, then my father's like, you know, let's do the continuation of the 1978 story. And yeah. so I had to put my documentary on hold for a little while. And then we went and made Deja Vu. And then when that was finished, I finished my documentary and then we released them both in April of 2019 at the same time. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. I did not know that. That's really yeah. good to know. And you as a producer on Deja Vu, was that fun working with your dad? Uh, yeah. And, and was yeah. it a hard movie to finance? Did you have trouble financing it because of the subject matter? Yeah. Well, you know, Mayer financed it himself. So my father, it was his own financing, which is honestly the best way to work because you have mm. no studio telling you how to make your movie. You I know, see. you're not you're not doing anybody a favor. You're not. You're not, you know, throwing a credit in there or, or putting an actor in a movie because they they're financing it. He had full control of everything. We filmed it for 29 days uh, all around Los Angeles. And, it, you know, we had our ups and downs making it uh, mostly ups. You know, we gave Mayer the stage that he uh, needed to make yeah. this movie. And uh, it was such a pleasure having Camille Keaton back in the game it was amazing and, to see her again you know and then meeting all the actors in the movie and working with jamie bernadette and maria olsen and everybody else and then me and my sister reprising our roles you know <laughs> as well you know we're also back in this one yeah um, so it, it was a treat you know from start to finish and it was a lot of uh, great experiences and fun times you know Did was there a reason why there was never any music in the original film? Was it yeah, money, yeah. money constraints or no, atmosphere? No. Basically, my father spent about three or four weeks trying to put music to the movie. Okay. And then after a few weeks, the sound effects editor, Alex Fow, who happened to have been my father's best friend and yeah. who happened to have been with my father when he helped the, the sexual assault victim back in 1974, Alex Fow said to my father, Mayor, the movie doesn't need music. It mm. is kicking off the screen. Every time you try to put music to a scene, the screen kicks it off. So... <laughs> Don't put music. My father said, Alex, you know, you're right. And my father calls it a silent score. It's a silent score. I love that term because you don't need music to make your mood understand how you're supposed to feel. 
No. The way, the way, <laughs> you, the way you feel watching this movie is your own personal experience, and you're creating your own music notes in your head. And I think that was part of the big success that you're not driven with this silly little bum 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 bum. Bum, 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 you know, suddenly I'm like, oh my God, I'm supposed to be scared. No, you're watching this movie with no music and your mind is making the music for you. And I love that. Uh, to me, it works so powerfully. I think it's one of the better things that this movie has going for it. Oh, aside, yeah. from, aside from Camille Keaton carrying the movie on her back, because I think she is incredible as Jennifer Hills in this movie. Yeah. Really incredible. Thank you for elaborating on the music thing. I know you touched on it in the documentary, but that that's really good to know that music was actually attempted to be put in, but I'm glad it didn't happen. Oh, yes. He tried all different kinds of music from bongo drums to soft to threatening. I mean, he tried so many different things and none of it worked. None of it worked, you know. And Alex, like I said, Alex said, don't use music, you know, <laughs> and that was that. <laughs> it, it's a shame Camille's career didn't explode. Do you think it was held back because of the notorious nature of the film? Yeah, I think back in those days, I think it was really different to be involved in a movie with such stigma and where you have these, you know, mm. critics, you know, picketing at movie theaters, you know, don't see this movie, you know, it will cause you to do awful things to men and this and that, I mean, to women and, and all these nasty things. And so I think, you know, back then in those days, it was not you know, a good thing for her career. But mm -hmm. lately, she's been getting a lot of work. You know, she's had a lot of credits recently. Yep. Um, and then look at Jamie Bernadette, who starred in I Spit in the Grave Deja Vu. You know, she's doing movie after movie after she's movie terrific. after movie, you know, but she, you know, she is incredible, mm -hmm. you know. So, but today's times are different and people are more accepting of, of movies with this type of subject matter now than they were back in the days when it was rather of unusual course. and, you know, in your face, you know. Mm. Well, relevance is something that uh, I see some movies are lost, but this is a movie that is still relevant today. And uh, it's, it's tough. It's a tough subject matter to get through and, you know, it watching is, it yeah. once is from start to finish especially if you've never seen it can be hard but yes. do you think it's relevant today the message that it's oh i th i think honestly i think it's more relevant today than it was back then mm. um and it's so unfortunate because of the subject matter you mm. know sexual assault is a very difficult subject matter you know, to, to talk about, I mean, even on social media, you know, to say the word rape, you have to spell an R with an asterisk A P E because you don't want to get shut down. I mean, you know, it, so I think it's easier to enjoy a movie about murder massacre than mm. it is about watching a, a person go through sexual assault. Mm. So it's a very difficult, brutal subject matter. And I think a lot of the points that Mayer brought up in the movie, like the way Johnny was saying, look at the way that you were dressed, you know, strutting yourself at the gas station. And exactly. you know, those are all very relevant to, to, to today. So I think the movie is as relevant today as it was 40 plus years ago. And next year will be the 45th anniversary of the 1978 release. Fantastic. That's, which I can't believe. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure um, cinemas might actually show retro screenings of it, hopefully. Right. 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 Uh, now, around the same time, you've had Death Wish. The original Death Wish came out before mm -hmm. I Spit on Your Grave. Mm -hmm. uh, Deliverance from Memory was around the same time. Both, yep. both had rapes, both were enduring. Correct. Both had enduring movie moments, but I, it seems like I Spit on Your Grave has more notorious. Is that because it was longer? The scene was longer, maybe, or stretched you know, out? It, it could be. It, it mm. could be. I mean, if you look at the difference with the, the sexual assault scenes and all three of the movies you mentioned, mm. I don't think, I think the, the two others pale in comparison to what Mayer showed you. You know, like a lot of people complain, well, you know, one one rape would have been enough. I didn't need to see back to back to back. Well, if he if Mayer only showed one rape, would the movie still be talked about? Maybe mm -hmm. not. 
maybe not. Mm -hmm. So it's funny how people question and they try to say how they would have made the movie. And that also a lot of people say, oh, Johnny's death should have been the last death. You know, why was Johnny the second death? Mm -hmm. after matthew why would the the motorboat and the propeller why was the axe and the propeller the last two deaths when johnny's the leader but the movie may have not been as successful you know the, I, I like the way mayor broke the formula of what people expect things to be totally. and what he did you know there's no music the the main guy does not get killed last you know so all the things that people expect he didn't do and maybe that's something to learn from that if you formulate something you know, you're copying, but if you go against the waves, you know, you're fighting it and, and maybe people would rather watch the fight than mm. watch someone just gently reach the shore, you know? So I, I think there's something to all the things that people complain or nag about. And right. I love it. You know, I'm never bothered by people saying they hate this movie or it's terribly made, which I don't agree with, or all these other things. It doesn't bother me. I actually celebrate it. I celebrate it and I respect everyone's opinion, no matter what it is, because they have a right to feel the way they feel about watching such a movie that's so brutal and ugly and hard to get through. Oh, it is. Uh, you know. is. Does your sister have the same view? Obviously, appearing in Deja, Deja Vu, she's still proud, proud of the movie and proud of. I think dad. so. I think yeah. so. We don't have we don't really have too many in-depth discussions about it. But sure. I, I know that she, you know, understands and appreciates the legacy that the movie has become. And now that it's a whole franchise, it's kind of like a hoot, you know. But, you know, there's still, you know, there's a lot going on with the 1978 movie. You know, you watch it today and it's one of these movies that it's timeless. You know, time did not affect this movie in a bad way. If anything, it's actually just as horrifying today. And I don't care what people say. People are like, well, I'm numb. You know, I've seen so many movies that are this movie. To me, it's still it's still, you know, hits yeah. me in the gut. Yeah, you know, it's to me, it still does, you know, and if it doesn't, um, you've seen, you've seen too many bad movies, then, you know, <laughs> like bad subject movies, you know, it's an art yeah. house movie, it's an art house movie disguised as a, a slasher horror, if you want, and it's not even a slasher when you think about it, it's that's the wrong term, but it's an art house movie right. hidden as a uh, mystery thriller, almost. Yes, exactly. Exactly. There, you know, he, he was surprised when they categorized it as a horror movie. He was actually right. very surprised. And I was too at first. You know, I'm like, is this a horror movie? Uh, is there a category for revenge? Is, mm -hmm. is there, a, you know, there was never a category. When I used to go visit Tower Video, it was horror, comedy, action, science fiction, of drama, course. musical, yeah. you know, Western. I, I never saw revenge section so they threw this movie in the horror section and i get it it, it, yeah, yeah. it belongs there i understand it's more my father always says it's more horrifying than a horror movie i get that you know mm. but it, it has to land in a place so it landed in the horror section <laughs> yeah in the in the little australian video shop i worked at i said uh, it was in the horror section of and course <laughs> of course, of course. Of course. yes <laughs> Uh, to, to wrap it up uh, shortly, tell me um, what you think might happen next. You know, you're saying the anniversary of it next year. Uh, do you still get royalties? Are, are there things in the future that you can tell me exclusive that might happen? There, there will be things coming up in the future. Um, I'm not at liberty to say anything right now, but there's there's more spit to come. And this particular <laughs> right. this particular box uh, that's coming out now is the 4K UHD by Kaleidoscope Home Entertainment. Yes. It's the first time in 44 years that we took my father's negative from the camera negative, the 35 millimeter print camera oh, negative. Incredible. And we made the 4K upgrade from there. And it's the first time ever being released in the UK. It also has exclusive to the UK Camille Keaton commentary, which is going to be really exciting. And so this will be a real treat for anyone that's a collector or people that have just heard the movie for the first time. This is the go to get your hands on this because it's got the 78 in 4K and the Blu-ray and it's got my documentary. So yep. you will learn everything you've ever wanted to know about this movie and more by Fantastic. getting this box set. Yeah. <laughs> 
No, I think it'll well and truly be a popular uh, thing for collectors and people new. new. And I'll, don't you love it, Terry, how they can release movies in 4K now that are 50 years old, 40 years old? I love old. it. I, I think so it's good. very special. And, you know... I, They're brand new but, movies, basically, you get to watch them Yes. Again. And when I watched the 4K, it was like me watching this movie for the first time. Yeah. The blood was so red. The the scenery and the wilderness was so green and beautiful. Everything was so crisp and clear. You can see the background so clearly and everything was just, it was a new viewing session for me. And I've seen this movie too many times to mention, but that was such an experience. I really enjoyed it so much. It's a, uh, it was a gorgeous beautiful thing to watch with such an ugly disgusting subject matter you put the two together and you're like <laughs> <laughs> you know it's movie it's gold. crazy yeah it is it is it really is yeah yeah all right well thank you very much for your time mate um good luck with everything and i hope we cross paths someday and, and i look forward to whatever you're up to in the future as well producing or whatever it might be another cameo maybe for 10 months <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, hopefully a little more than 10 bucks. But yes, I really appreciate it. Thank you, Shane, for having me. It's always a pleasure talking spit with anybody and more so with you. So thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. No problem, mate.